Hello, and in this tutorial, what I wanted to do is just kind of go a little bit sort of undercover of uh, Maya and give you a little bit of kind of what's going on under the bonnet. Uh, that can be quite useful uh, for you as you're modeling to have that kind of slightly deeper understanding of what's happening. So before we go there, and, and what I want to do is kind of relate this to the uh, node structure that uh, Maya is using in the background and kind of just open that up to you. So, um, before we go there, what I want to do is I've got a cube here, okay, and um, what I want to do is just have a look at this cube in the hypergraph, uh, uh, the, the in the hypergraph view. So what I want to do is have a look at this in the node view, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, um, uh, sorry, I'm going to go Windows, uh, General Editors, and here I want a hypergraph. Uh, connections. So hypergraph refers to the node view. Okay, so I'm going to click on that, and uh, what we've got is we've got all the sort of nodes that make up this cube here. Okay, uh, now if I want to, I could. Um, uh, it may be that you don't have this view. If if you, if you just end up with just P cube, what you want to do is go graph input output connections and then that will pull this up for you okay now um the p cube is the uh entire cube uh object that that we have so i can actually just move that object so when i'm in object mode that's what i'm actually manipulating is this is this p cube object and that's typically what i'll name okay but the p cube object is made up of some other objects okay so what it's made up of is the shape so the shape is uh the actual mesh OK, um, and uh, what's actually useful is uh, is the actual mesh that, that makes up the uh, object. And then polycube is the actual primitive that we use to create that mesh. So this is the primitive that created the mesh. This is the actual mesh, the resulting mesh that we have. OK, this is the actual uh, uh, shading group, i.e. this is what's going to send it to our shady, uh, shader to be actually rendered. And then this node here represents the entire object that we can then use to translate and manipulate this. Now, what happens is when we when we're in the channel box, the channel box is kind of bringing together all those bits for us, okay. So it shows us what the shape is, although we can't really manip uh, uh, manipulate any of those attributes. It's giving us the P cube object. So all these translations that we're doing on the entire object that relates to this uh, node here. But it's also giving us the input. So it's going to give us this poly cube input. So if I go back to this, that relates to this node. So you can see when I select that, uh, let's just do that again. So I select P cube and when I select this, you'll see that highlight in there. So that relates to this cube here as well. OK, and I can make adjustments in there. I can change the number of subdivisions. OK, uh, in, in the, that make up the cube. I can adjust the height of the cube, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I can go in there and, and all the options that made up that original primitive, I can edit and adjust. OK, but I can also access it by literally clicking on polycube and access those it's the same attributes but i can access them there so what the channel box does is it kind of gives us all those sort of nodes that make up that object it sort of puts it together into one interface but what we also have is something called the attribute editor so the attribute editor is looking at the same information it's looking at the same nodes but giving us a much more detailed view and it's going to show us the attributes for one node at a time so whereas the control channel box here is sort of bringing those together. The attribute editor, which is this tab here, is going to look at each node individually. So you'll see that I click on the poly node, I get one set of attributes. I click on the shape node, I get another set of attributes. And I click on this node here. Uh, and this gives me, uh, this actually gives me access to the um, uh, materials. So this is the Lambert shader that's going to be used to render this cube. OK, and we'll talk about shaders in more detail in another tutorial, but that's effectively the material that we're applying to that cube. And if I click on polycube, it gives me uh, 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 information relating to the entire the entire cube uh, shape. In fact, I, if I click on PQ1, that's the translation and rotation material there that we've that we've got. OK, so what the um, attribute editor does is it allows us to look at the attributes for each of these nodes in a lot more detail. So if I go into this, as you'd expect, you've got all the things that make up this. OK, it's displayed slightly differently, but it's all made up 
Um, but all the attributes relate to the uh, settings that are used to create that primitive in the first place. And then if we go into the polycube uh, shape, okay, these these relate to things like how the uh, uh, how the shape is displayed. So often you might end up going into things like displacement maps. Quite often you're going into things like um, smooth mesh to kind of define how the smooth mesh is displayed in this view or is actually rendered out okay and there's various options relating to that and then you might go into things like uh, your render stats so uh, it may be that you want certain objects to uh, cast shadows or not cast shadows or or, or receive shadows or not re receive shadows or create re um, create reflections and not create reflections or receive reflections uh, it may be that you want materials to behave slightly differently in your render and uh, meshes to, to to behave slightly differently in your render and you can do that inside these render stats so getting access to these attributes is quite useful when you're trying to get into the into the detail of it um, uh, as well okay so um, and, and so quite often yeah you do want to get into this shape node uh, you don't necessarily need to go through the hypergraph editor in order to do that you can just you know if I select the object here p cube you can see that the p cube shape Okay, so this node here, I can just access it by clicking that tab. But I just want you to understand that that is effectively that's this node here that it's relating to that that, it, that it's showing here. So um, now what I want to do is I just I just want to do a quick um, a polygon mesh manipulation. So I'm just going to do a quick extrude. Now I cover extrude in more detail in another tutorial. So I'll just do a quick extrude. I'm going to go into face mode. I'm going to select this face. And then what I'm going to do is go edit mesh and I'm going to select extrude. OK, and I'm just going to pull this mesh out and create an extrude. OK, I don't want to go into more detail about how extrude works in this stage. What I want to show you is that something's happened in this node uh, in, in this node here. It's created an extra node, which is basically this extrude. OK, um, and if I go into the channel box editor, you can actually see that uh, yeah, we can see it's just yeah. If I go into the channel box editor, and I'm just gonna go into object mode and do this. So let's just sorry. Let's try again. I'm gonna go into object mode and select this in the channel box editor. Great. So I go into object mode and we look at the channel box editor, you can see that we've got our polygon uh, polygon cube. That's the primitive settings that we had. Then I've got this extrude. These are settings relating to the extrude, you see, and that relates to this this extrude node here and in fact you can see when we select the different options that these are being selected here so as you manipulate the the, the, the headline to take away from this is as you're manipulating your object it's adding extra nodes to your um, uh, to your um, sorry it's adding extra nodes to your um, uh, uh, to your object okay to your DAG which makes up that object okay and you're going to do a lot of these manipulations you're going to do a, a lot of these mesh tools so what happens is this kind of becomes a little bit cumbersome you see and and while it's useful you've got this sort of history and you can kind of go back to these inputs that's fine uh, but it can be a little bit cumbersome as well and um, so sometimes what you want to do is actually um, you don't need to have this history. Sometimes you just want to remove this history and you just want the basic mesh. OK, so but before I do that, I just want to demonstrate something else as well. Within this node uh, diagram, what you can do is if I've got an extrude and I've done some other bits and I want to remove this extrude, what I can do is just select that extrude node. And if I just press delete, it completely undoes. It's, it's removed that extrude entirely. So that's another useful thing that we can do with this node. But back to the point that I was making, I'm going to go control Z back to the point that I was making. So you end up with this hugely complicated node diagram and that can cause Maya to run unstably. It can cause Maya to crash. It can cause Maya to behave in ways that you don't want. So quite often at key stages of your modeling, what you want to do is basically reduce. You don't want to undo everything. You don't want to delete you don't want to delete these steps, but what you want to do is just get rid of the nodes and reduce it back down to the shape. Uh, uh, you want to reduce it back down to just the shape of the mesh. Okay, uh, I simplify all the nodes. 
okay so that things behave properly so again what I'm going to do is go I'm going to go into object mode let's make sure I'm in object mode okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go um, edit uh, 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 delete by type okay and I'm going to go delete history OK, and what you'll see is it's not changed our mesh in any way at all. It's just got rid of those extraneous nodes. And all that means is that I can't go back now and alter those. I can't go back to those nodes and alter it, but it will make my whole Maya project lighter uh, uh, and should and and uh, and should reduce any chances of it uh, behaving in a way that I don't want or crashing. The final thing I would say as well is uh, one of the things you can do is if we're in object mode, uh, and this is kind of like a side note, let's imagine I've done a transformation, I've moved it to here, okay, and at the moment it's got this translation, translate information on here. Now, if I wanted to move this into another scene, uh, uh, so I want to move this into an Unreal scene or a Unity scene or a, a Nuke a, a nuke scene or, 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 or into another package and I want it not to come in in the middle I want it to come into this location here okay uh, what I can do is I can do something called freeze transformations okay so what this does uh, so if I click on the object so you'll notice we've got this translate late information this is telling us that this object is in this location what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go edit uh, modify yeah modify freeze transformations and notice that it's reset all of that back to zero okay and effectively what that's doing is it's saying um, okay it's saying that this mesh so when we bring it in it's saying that the it's saying that even though it will bring uh, it's saying that the mesh is in this position here okay so what that means is uh, while the P cube shape might be here, the mesh that's in that P cube shape is going to be over here. What that effectively means is when I bring this object into another um, uh, into another package, it will automatically place that object in this position and not in the middle. So that's quite a useful little technique because when you're porting objects is to freeze transformations first. Okay, so we've covered quite a bit there, but hopefully that's sort of given you some tips and thoughts, things to think about when you're working with Maya, and hopefully help you avoid getting caught in some of the pitfalls that are there.